I'm Wendy and myself and my husband John own 30 acres of beautiful ancient natural woodland here on the outskirts of Tunbridge Wells where we've been slowly and gradually trying to regenerate it to as healthy and natural a state as we possibly can. And part of the plan uh, to work on helping our, our woodland come back to life as much as possible and be as healthy as it can is the control of the water flow through the woods. One of the main incentives was to protect our, our woodland track. Um, when we first bought the woods, there was a track in place that ran through the woodland. And unfortunately, the water flow over the woods from the road to this corner part of the track um, was too much for the pipe that ran under it to take. And so the water was pouring all the way across the track and washing it away, um, which led to it being impassable most of the year unless you had a four by four. Basically what you want to do is you're trying to mimic the beavers where you're stacking the logs um, and that, that's what our main, our biggest dams are where we've got sort of horizontal stacks of logs with little twigs woven in between to make it more of a mesh like a, like a filter. I've now got a series of three dams that are fairly close together that have been built by one of my Duke of Edinburgh volunteers, Seb, with my children. They are beaver dams, we call them. Branches that are woven together horizontally with smaller sticks woven in between. So here we've got a slightly different design in with the flow of the channel itself. Um, there's the little grill underneath and then this bigger grill on top. Leaves get all trapped in between the sticks and that helps slow the flow. Another feature of this particular dam is the way that it's located next to this tree here where it's sort of fallen and grown out. So if it does get too full and the water starts to spread outwards, this forms part of the dam as well. So the idea is you need to slow and spread the flow of the river, but you don't want to stop or divert it. When there's been a lot of rain and there's a lot of water running over the surface, then it can gather in pools, which are then gradually released or trickle through the dams onto the next dam, which will then hold it back. And so bit by bit, it controls the flow of the river or the water or the surface runoff in a manageable way so that you're not just getting a massive flush of water pouring off. When we were building this particular dam, we realised that it, it didn't have any of the tree trunks or the fallen tree stumps to hold it um, in place. So we put some stakes down behind it just to stop it all being moved with the water over time. Um, we also lay down a tree trunk just across there so that when it really rains and there's a lot of water, that just helps stop it pouring off down there and keeps it in the place so that it slowly gets released through the dam rather than pouring off across the, across the surface. This is basically nature's doing it for us here. We had, haven't had to do anything here. This is just a convenient spot in the watercourse where that leaky woody dam was created by nature herself. This is basically the grill that we've put in place to stop our pipe that goes under the track from getting clogged up. So to construct this one, um, Ellie and I made stakes by sharpening the ends of these bits of branches and then just hammering them in with a mallet just to give it a little bit more stability. Choosing the material, you have to suddenly really sort of bring your focus right down to the ground, have a look around you. Think about the different materials. If you pick up a log and it's covered in fungus, it means it's been there for a long time and probably should be left where it is because it's now becoming habitat. In conservation terms, the reason you will need to control the water flow through your woods is to preserve the topsoil, to stop it being eroded. Um, in ancient woodlands, the soil itself holds all of the seeds and the spores that you need to come back to life when the climates are right and when the deer are under control and, and don't eat them all, but that's very precious. Um, and if that gets washed away and all eroded, not only does it mean you don't have that there anymore, but it gets washed all the way down into the streams, the streams and the rivers goes out further downstream. It silts up the riverbeds and can cause flooding problems further down the river. So a little few controls in place up here can have a huge impact further downstream. 
So Albert's has been um, a labour of love, I would say, for us, for our family. And it's something that I see continuing through my lifetime and hopefully that of my children. But I'm always very conscious that we don't own these woods. We're, they don't belong to us. They belong to the earth. But for now, we are the very lucky, privileged current keepers and guardians.